Good morning. Welcome to our service of worship today. You are listening in on Holy Cross Lutheran Church here in Kitchener, Ontario. We're continuing with our online services due to the pandemic lockdown. Uh, we have something new in our worship service today. A couple has volunteered to be cantors to give the responses and in our worship this day to enhance our worship and also to make it feel a little bit more like a congregational setting, all within the protocols that we follow in this pandemic. Today we worship on the first Sunday after Epiphany, and in this worship we look at our Lord Jesus in the temple as a 12-year-old boy. What has been most memorable in our lives these past few weeks and months? And today we examine how our priorities might change. Today in our gospel lesson, we see our Lord Jesus as a 12-year-old boy in the temple, teaching and listening to God's word. And as he hears and listens to that word, we're told he grows in wisdom and stature. Wisdom is waiting to be found in all of us as we hear God's word and seek his kingdom. Pastor Astley is currently on holidays, so I am leading the worship service today. He will be returning to the office tomorrow. Having said this, we begin our worship with our first hymn, Children of the Heavenly Father. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who, who made heaven and earth. earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We take a moment to meditate upon God's word and for self-examination. Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most, o most merciful, merciful God, God you who has given, given your only begotten, begotten Son to die for us, 
have, have mercy upon us, us and, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. O oh Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfill the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for this first Sunday after the Epiphany is from Isaiah chapter 42. In this first servant song of Isaiah, the servant Jesus Christ is promised. And here Isaiah prophesies that he would come to release all who believe in him from the dominion of sin and darkness. And that he would come to bring God's justice to all nations, to men broken lives, and to bring comfort. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you, I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is written in the 12th chapter of the book of Romans, beginning at the first verse. In these verses, the apostle Paul begins his admonition to us not to be conformed to this world, but to serve God sacrificially and faithfully and to show true Christian love toward our fellow Christians and to all people. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. We continue with our anthem entitled, What a Beautiful Name. Jesus Christ. 
the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Here we do have the Gospel writer Luke's account of the 12-year-old boy Jesus, his visit to Jerusalem, and his presence in the Jerusalem temple. Now Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it. But supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Together now we confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our sermon hymn is, Speak, O Lord, Your Servant Listens. And if you're following in the Lutheran service book, it is hymn number 589.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I mentioned at the beginning in greeting you this morning, our sermon text is the Gospel lesson, the account of our Lord Jesus in the temple in Jerusalem. Would you bow your heads in a word of prayer with me? Heavenly Father, you have shined on us the new light of your word made flesh, who has lived among us. Cause us to find in Jesus who and what is really important in this life and grant us your blessing as we follow him. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus we pray. Amen. We have come to that time in the year once again when people have been or are continuing to make New Year's resolutions. Have you made any this new year? Where did the tradition come from anyway, making New Year's resolutions? It actually started long, long ago in the nation of Babylon. They always ended the year by resolving to do things that they should have done the year before. Their resolutions were more simple, more easy to keep perhaps than the ones we make today. I resolved to return the farm equipment I borrowed last month would be an example of a resolution we might hear them make. Today we make resolutions about losing weight, exercising more, spending more time, not sitting on the couch and watching TV. Things that sound good but are hard to keep. What are some of your resolutions? This morning, a 12-year-old boy is going to teach us a New Year's resolution. A seventh grader, mind you. For today in the gospel lesson, Jesus speaks to us. And the lesson he teaches us is probably one of the best New Year's resolutions we could ever make. Let us see what this resolution is. Our gospel lesson describes Mary and Joseph as a very devout family. For every year they went to the Passover at Jerusalem. As a 12-year-old boy, Jesus went with them. And there they spent the week as was their custom. After the feast was over, Mary and Joseph began the trip back home to Nazareth. Now remember, back then, walking was the main mode of transportation. Often people would travel in big groups, for it was safer, and it seemed to make the time go faster. I picture in my mind's eye Mary and Joseph traveling with their extended family, friends, and fellow Jews, all who lived up north. In groups like these, the adults would often walk together, and the children would separate into their own group to play and do other things, just as children do yet today. Now, mind you, it was a three-day walk back to Nazareth. And so on the first night of their trip back home, Mary and Joseph set up camp and look for Jesus among the group. But they couldn't find him. He wasn't with the other children. He wasn't with their relatives or even with their friends. Jesus was missing. He was gone without a trace. If you are a parent and you cannot find your child, What do you do? You probably start to panic, and rightly so. There are all kinds of bad reasons why children go missing. As you well can imagine, Mary and Joseph were very upset. And so they returned to Jerusalem and looked for Jesus for three days. During that time period, I am sure all kinds of questions were racing through their minds. Questions like, is he lost? 
Has he been abducted? Is he alive? Is he hurt? Finally, we are told that they found Jesus in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them, and asking questions. I picture Mary and Joseph coming around the corner, and there is Jesus, their 12-year-old son, interacting with the teachers in the temple. We are told in verse 47 of the gospel lesson that everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. And then Mary, Mother Mary, rebuked her son Jesus by saying, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. But Jesus, the 12-year-old boy, doesn't respond by saying, I'm sorry. Instead, he teaches his parents something they didn't expect to learn that day. He says to them, why are you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Now Mary and Joseph at first did not understand what Jesus was saying to them. What does this mean? That Jesus had to be about his father's business. You see, even at the young age of 12, Jesus knew that he was not just the son of Mary. He was, at the very same time, the son of God. And even at this young age, Jesus knew that his purpose in life was not just to play, not just to be a good son, not just to grow up. He knew that he was on this earth for a greater purpose. He had a divine mission to fulfill, to be the savior of all mankind. And part of this mission was spending time in God's word, listening to the teachers and asking them questions, filling himself with the words and promises of God that are found in the scriptures. This was his father's business. And it was so important that he came up missing from the group returning to Nazareth. Ultimately, this 12-year-old boy would grow up to become the greatest teacher the Jews had ever come to know, carrying out his father's business. But even more importantly, Jesus would be about his father's business by dying on a cross. This was his ultimate mission in life, to be the savior of all mankind. Yes, he was still a good son to his parents. For the Bible tells us that Jesus returned home after that day and obeyed his father and mother. But he had a greater mission, a more important divine mission, to be about his father's business as a savior of the world. This was his number one priority. Do you realize that you too have a divine mission in your life? You're not just here on this earth to work, to pay bills, to raise kids, socialize, work more, spoil your grandchildren, pay more bills, and so on and so forth. This is not really why God has placed you on this planet. You have a greater purpose, a deeper purpose. And that is too, to be about your father's business. That is why you are here. God's business can be summed up in five words. The five words are here, confess, receive, change, and glorify. 
Why are you here? First and foremost, to hear the word of God. God wants us to be a big part of your life. And as you hear the word of God, God's business includes that you confess your sins. God's business also means that you receive the forgiveness of sins from your Lord Jesus Christ. And as that happens, you also receive the Holy Spirit who changes you for the better. And as you change, you grow into a person who glorifies God in the way you live your life. This is God's business. To hear his word. To confess your sins. To receive Christ's forgiveness. To change for the better. And to glorify God. This is why God has placed you upon this earth to be about your father's business. Was this your priority in the past year, 2020? Or like many people today, do you say, well, I've been too busy for that sort of thing to do it regularly. I had so many other things that needed to be done. Is God's business for you a priority? Or is it something that you do if you only have nothing else going on in your life? For Jesus, it was so important that he came up missing. Are you too willing to come up missing because you're going about your father's business? I was glad to hear some of the members of our church this past Christmas Eve and Christmas Day that they decided to come up missing from some of their traditional Christmas family gatherings in order to worship the newborn Jesus. It's sometimes a difficult thing for people to do to arrange some things so that they can hear God's word. How many times in our festivities and our festivals is the gathering together, the eating of the traditional meal, the most important thing? What happens, you see, when we go about our Father's business? Sometimes we come up missing. Family gatherings have to wait. The word of God comes first. Was that you in 2020? What about sports in the past year? Were you willing to sacrifice sports, rearrange your schedule, sometimes come up missing? from participating in or viewing a certain sporting event so that you could be about your father's business? Or in the past year, did you push the word of God to the side? Something had to give. So you sacrificed your father's business. This is idolatry, you know. Was that you in 2020? Or what about work? Quite a challenge the past few months and year. Working perhaps in location at home. Getting out of your normal routine. Having to hush the children or those in the house. Getting angry and upset. And when we have that tenor, that feeling, sometimes it's hard to put our mind in God's Word. And what about projects at home? 
We're told that they have increased greatly as people sit at home and notice things as they sit there and are there and haven't noticed before. But have those things taken a top priority on the list? That hearing God's word and taking time in devotions takes a second place. This morning I'd like to recommend to you a New Year's resolution and that is to make God's word your Heavenly Father's business your top priority in this year. It all starts with confessing your sins to your Heavenly Father. Do not hesitate to do that. Look over the past year. Confess all your sins to God. Confess all the times you let your heavenly Father's business go by the wayside so that you could pursue the things of this world. Confess. And then what? Then receive the forgiveness from Christ for all your sins. Do you really realize, do you take to heart that Christ suffered and died on the cross to pay for all of your and my sins. He came to wash away all of our sins by his precious body and blood. Receive Christ's free forgiveness and then let the Holy Spirit change you for the better. As you receive Christ's forgiveness, the Holy Spirit will change you more and more into a person who makes God's word a priority in your life. And then you will become more of one who glorifies God. God's business, God's word in 2021. Let this be your priority. You see, it's possible to be a family man to have God's word as a priority to be a good parent or grandparent and actually be a better parent and grandparent when God's word is at the forefront. But make no mistake, it's still possible to be involved in sports, to work lots of hours, to complete all types of projects at home. It's possible to yet do all these things and still have God's business as your top priority. This does mean that at times we will have to sacrifice something or put off something to come up missing as Jesus did on the trip back to Nazareth. Put God's business, God's word first in 2021 and you will be blessed More blessed than anyone who casts it aside because they are too busy. Someone once said that a Bible that is falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. God's business. God's word. Here in God's word you find Christ born on Christmas for the whole purpose of taking your and my sins away. In it, we see him dying on the cross in order to save our souls. In it, he rises from the dead, promising to you and me the gift of eternal life. In his word, Christ blesses us, fills us with his joy and peace, and the kind of love that only God can give. This is God's business. Let this be your and my priority in this year, and we will be blessed. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes your and my understanding keep our hearts and minds in faith in our Lord Jesus. Amen. Would you join with me in singing the offertory?
by way of parish announcements, there are several listed in the bulletin, just to call your attention that on Thursday and Friday, uh, the youth will be meeting uh, by Zoom link. Both meeting dates and times are at 7 p.m. Also in the bulletin, just a reminder that next Sunday, when Pastor Astley returns, uh, online Bible class will begin on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. So in addition to our worship service online, Bible class will be held once again. Also in the bulletin, and if you're not aware of it, uh, the uh, Lutheran Foundation is presenting a webinar this Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, it concerns stewarding your estate or estate planning. All are welcome and directions are given there if you would like to join that webinar. Also, in addition to the prayers, we will have a petition uh, for the family of Ortwin Kays, brother of Dieter Kays, who passed away a week ago Saturday. Uh, visitation is being held at the Urban Good Funeral Home to this afternoon from 2 to 3.15 p.m. And at 3.30, a funeral service will be held. Uh, the protocols can be found for the visitation and also the service on the Urban Good Funeral Home website as well. We present our offerings to the Lord and then continue with the prayer of the church. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, bless the gifts you're given that they may help dispense the saving grace of your gospel in the world. Bless each giver that with true love and unselfish hearts, we may always be ready and willing to put our earthly treasures to heavenly use to the glory of your name. Amen. Let us also pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that your Son, the eternal Word, has become flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Extend his praise into all the world that many more with us would come to hope in his steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, preserve your church. By your mercies, lead us to present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to you for the good of our neighbors and in faith toward you. Send faithful pastors to preach your gospel among us and help all Christians to think with sober judgment, not considering themselves more highly than others, but each living and serving according to the measure of faith assigned by God. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son diligently heard the word of God and grew in wisdom and stature, submissive to his earthly parents and always about your business and in your house. Keep the families of your church abiding in your word, eager to be found among your word and sacraments, and always treasuring your divine wisdom and favor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you gave to your servant Solomon unsurpassed wisdom to rule your people Israel, wisdom that begins in fearing you. Give to the leaders and elected officials of our nation wisdom for the task to discern between good and evil and to govern the people of our nation in peace and quietness. Be gracious to preserve our prime minister and our premier, our governor, and all legislators and judges. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give patience and endurance to all who are sick or in any need, especially at this time Betty Hebner, Eileen Usher, Marg Clagus, Val Toth, Reverend Roger Winger, Annette Hamp, and keep and heal them according to your will. Almighty God, the Lord of life and death, 
who turns man to destruction and says, Return, you children of men. We give you thanks for all the mercies which during his lifetime you did bestow upon this, our beloved brother, Ort when Kays, now fallen asleep. And especially do we bless you for having brought him to the knowledge of your dear son, Jesus Christ. We now pray you to comfort his survivors with your everlasting comfort and cheer them with a sweet hope of a blessed reunion in heaven. Grant to the lifeless body now rest in the bosom of the earth and hereafter, together with us all, a joyful resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, teach us all to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom and finally be saved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, in your mercy you have established the Christian home among us. We beseech you so to rule and direct our hearts that we may be good examples to our children and grandchildren and those subject to us and not offend them by word or deed, but faithfully teach them to love your church and hear your blessed word. Give unto us all your spirit and grace that the seed of your word may bring forth good fruit so that we who are your children by faith may advance your glory and give unto you honor and praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord and Savior from sin, who has also taught us to pray, and we pray together. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our hearts as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the blessing, the benediction of our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Our parting hymn is Christ Be My Leader, hymn number 861.